I think um, they, they really would, the Discovery Institute really would love to get this before the Supreme Court. They would, they would love to generate another, uh, to, to generate a legal case in a district where they really do think they own the judges this time. And where they, they um, could, especially if they could get a conflicting ruling in another, in another circuit, that's when the, the Supreme Court might be more likely to, to take a case. But, and I think they especially now maybe like the makeup of the court a little bit better. Um, but I'm, I'm not so sure uh, where, I don't know where it will go but if, uh, and what the court would do. But the way they might get another case, now they're kind of, the Discovery Institute's kind of focusing on getting this uh, intelligent design at, at the local level. They haven't had much luck working with state boards of education. It generates a lot of negative publicity. Um, and they, they've lost every effort in Kansas, Ohio. So they would love to get one using the sanitized terminology uh, at the local level, where they could get it in, where at the local level, and there might be nobody really enforced to contest it. I think that's what they're looking at doing now, dropping it down, working with local school boards. And we do have a, a, a science curriculum policy in Washita Parish that, that is just exactly like what they were hoping for. In fact, the Discovery Institute was very happy that this policy was adopted. And so far, nothing's been done about it, but there is one. Mm. Uh, hi, uh, Will William Mount from University of Guelph. Yep. Okay. Um, reading uh, some of like, Wells's and Dembski stuff, it's like, hard to see how they could just you know accidentally be this horribly wrong. I mean, it, it seems like they're uh, how they could ac accidentally be so horribly wrong. Yes, and uh, they, it does seem that they're intentionally sort of misrepresenting things. Uh, they, they certainly have to be aware of uh, all the mistakes in their uh, books over these years. Mm -hmm. Um. I was just like wondering, like, uh, what, what you get to comment maybe on like their psychology of this. Like, how can they just uh, keep continually pre presenting like the exact same viewpoint all this time without ever admitting any errors or anything like that? These people are fanatics. Um, they are, uh, and and you know, I, I kind of like Ken Miller. He said, you know, I've stopped trying to psychoanalyze these guys. Uh, but if you look in almost every case. Um, these people in Dembski's case, uh, Philip Johnson's case, uh, 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 Wells is kind of the odd bird because he's a Mooney, which they don't seem to mind very much, by the way. Um, but, but there was some life-changing religious experience, some conversion. Um, Dembski and his parents had sort of a group conversion when he was in college. Um, and uh, Johnson's wife left him, and he, he had a born-again experience at the age of 38, and a, a traumatic personal prop dilemma, which he has talked about, by the way. I'm not, you know, gossiping on him. He talks about this. Um, and so in, in, in these cases, you know, religion is the reason. It has nothing to do with science. It's just that they are using science as their vehicle. And, you know, and, and the reason that they keep doing this, despite the fact that they, they've been discredited time and time again is because it's really not about the truth. It's not about science. It's about power. Um, it's about who will control public policy. It's about who will control educational policy because they know if they're going to change the culture back to the Christian foundations that it should be on, they got to get hold of the kids. Um, and so you have to look at the intelligent design movement as precisely what it is. It's an integral component of the religious right. It's just it, it, discover, uh, intelligent design is the Discovery Institute's logistical contribution to the decades-old effort, which is about 40 years old now, to get back the public school system and to get prayer back in and Bible reading and all of that. Um, and they, these people really do want to change the government. Um, and and they're, they're getting a lot of help from Regent Law School, I'll tell you, um, if you pay attention to the news lately. Um, but but it's, about, it's about religion and power. That's, that's one of the oldest stories in the book. And, and that's why they continue to lie to the American people. Uh, thanks. It's not new. I have a question about the new terminology that's even replacing intelligent design. It's been suggested, like uh, PZ Myers especially, has argued that um, with this new terminology, you know, they're just going to put out, oh, here's a book about evolution and include some misinformation, but without the phrases like intelligent design, it'll be hard to show that it's an establishment clause violation because, I mean, Dover was all about the establishment clause and you have to link it to religion, mm -hmm. and that with this new tactics, you, it'll be almost impossible to link it to religion, and so the legal strategy will fail. As, as someone who's been involved in this, what's your 
perspective on that? Will it become harder? Or? Well, that's, that's one of the areas in which my work is most relevant. Um, there are some people who, fair, who are fairly pessimistic about this, you know, looking at the sanitized terminology um, and thinking that it's, this is going to cause us a lot of legal headaches. But I really don't think so, um, because they can't cleanse it completely. Notice that in Explore Evolution, Okay, the irreducible complexity is in that book. And that you can tie that directly to intelligent design and intelligent design directly to creation science. What you have to do, it's, it's very, very important, and we stressed this in, in working with the attorneys to get the case ready, and the judge took note of it, is you have to you have to establish the historical context very clearly, and you have, have to establish the historical, let's say, the evolutionary line of descent from creation science to intelligent design. And that's very easy to do. This was predictable, because creationists have always done this. Every time they lose a case in federal court, they have to change their strategy, and they change their terminology a little bit. It's, it, and it's, it's very consistent historically over the last, uh, what, 40 years since, um, since uh, the 1960s. Um, and so it's going to be very easy to show that this historical context out of which this sanitized terminology comes. So only a judge who completely ignored the historical context, which Antonin Scalia did in the Edwards case. He just discounted the historic. He wanted to take the word of the Louisiana legislators just at face value. Oh, who, religious purpose? Who? Us? No. And he, he believed him. You know? And so, you know, unless you have a judge like Justice Scalia, uh, other judges who look at the historical context and, and Judge Jones did. They're going to see this, you know. I mean, it's just another of their little tricks, and and it's going to be very easy um, to establish that in court. Um, I think.